Hello and welcome to Space Chat for the first time in quite a long time. It's been a minute since we were space chatting together, so I'm going to give everyone a minute or two to sign on before I start diving into all of the fun space and science. Now, for those of you who might not be new to space chat, who might be return viewers, I might sound a little bit strange, um, and that's because while I was away, I was getting my tonsils removed. So for this temporary weird portion of time, I sound a little bit different as I am healing up post tonsil removal. For those of you who've had your tonsils removed, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're getting back into the swing of things um, just, uh, just in time for the holidays. And I'm very excited to talk about the upcoming astronomical events with all of you. So amazing, awesome, everyone is gathering, gathering for the space chat. So welcome everyone officially to space chat. Every week right here, well, unless I'm getting my tonsils removed, every week right here I go live and I take a deeper look at Earth, the universe, and beyond. Now today I will be talking all about the upcoming conjunction between Jupiter and Saturn and their convincing appearance as the Star of Bethlehem or Christmas star in the night sky. Now, just a reminder for those of you new to Space Chat. Here I go live and I will dive into a new topic, I'll give you some background information, do a little bit of talking on my own, and then the real fun happens, where I open it up to questions from all of you. Now, some people have asked us questions over social media already, but if you have not gotten the chance to ask your question yet, Drop it in the comments below at any time during Space Chat and I will get to as many of the questions as possible. And for those of you participating from Space.com's forums, welcome! We are so excited to be growing our little space family. So let's get into it. Let's talk about conjunctions and the Christmas star. So in just a few days on December 21st, Jupiter and Saturn will have their closest embrace in nearly 400 years during an incredibly close great conjunction. Now in astronomy, conjunction is really just a word that means two astronomical objects, like in this case planets, but it can also mean asteroids, moons, or even stars, it just means that two of these objects look really, really, really close in the night sky. That's all that that really means. Now, a planetary conjunction, like what we're going to see with Jupiter and Saturn, happens when the two planets line up with Earth in their orbits. So Jupiter takes about 12 years to get around the Sun, but Saturn, being a little farther away, the bigger orbit, a little bit slower, it takes about 30 years to make the same trip around the Sun. So about every 20 years, Jupiter catches up to and eventually passes Saturn, aligning in the process. Now, while this conjunction happens every 20 years, it's been nearly 400 years since they've been this close. Uh, I mean, they're going to be really, really close in the night sky. Uh, now, Jupiter and Saturn have been nearing closer and closer all month, so if you've been looking up at the night sky at any point throughout December, you may have already noticed them inching closer and closer together. In fact, through most of December, they've been less than one degree apart. Now, if you're having trouble finding them or haven't yet got outside to look at the planets, meeting and getting closer to this great conjunction, try looking southeast just after sunset, or dusk as some people describe it. The pair, the pair should be fairly high in the sky and distinctly bright and visible. And in fact, especially on the 21st, when it's the official conjunction, they will be so bright and visible and close that they will look like one bright, beautiful star in the sky, despite neither of them being stars. Um, and they'll be so clear that you won't need any equipment, you shouldn't need binoculars, you shouldn't need a telescope to view them, just the naked eye should be just fine. So what does this great conjunction, this astronomical event that we've been anticipating, have to do with the Christmas star or the star of Bethlehem as it is in the Bible? 
um, which my knowledge is less on, apologies. Um, well, because the great conjunction will appear as one bright point in the sky, and it's coinciding with the winter solstice, um, which is also around the time of many winter holidays, including Christmas, it's being referred to by many as the Christmas star, and many are referring to it kind of as, as the star of Bethlehem from these stories. But again, just to reiterate, it's not a star. It will look like a star in the sky if you haven't been planet watching before, but it really is two planets in our solar system who just happen to be in this interesting, beautiful place in their orbits where they line up and we're able to view them in this special, unique way. Now, dating back to the origins of Christmas and, uh, and the stories that go along with it, scientists have actually been investigating for many years and decades what the Star of Bethlehem, a star that's in these stories seen by three fabled wise men, what that star actually could have been. Was it a comet? Could it have been a meteor? Was it a planetary conjunction like we're about to see? Uh, but unfortunately, inconsistencies, uncertainties surrounding the exact dates and times and changing terminology when it comes to astronomical events has made this seriously tricky. For example, previously, comets were actually known as hairy stars, um, and planets were called wandering stars because they were these bright objects in the sky that looked like stars and seemed to move place and wander around in the sky. Um, and obviously now we know that they're planets and they're orbiting the sun like we are, um, but because this terminology has changed so much over the years, it's difficult to track information over time. Additionally, while many celebrate the Christmas holiday on December 25th, that date was actually chosen because it aligned with the Roman festival of Saturnalia. Um, and it's been said by historians that this date was actually chosen to avoid drawing attention and possible persecution at the time. There's also a ton of debate surrounding the actual year of Jesus' birth. There's a lot of information out there and thoughts and opinions and debate. And so kind of finding the possible astronomical truth within it all is understandably pretty tricky. So. For these reasons, pinpointing the date and pinpointing what actually was going on is a little bit tricky. Now, despite all of these challenges, scientists do estimate that whatever star-like appearance in the sky, whatever that event was, likely happened between 7 and 2 BCE. And the star, star in quotation marks, could have been anything from an unusually bright fireball meteor. Uh, it could have been a bright comet, um, it's been likened to Halley's Comet, it could have been a supernova outburst, or even, like we're going to see this week, a planetary conjunction of two or possibly even three planets getting so close in the sky that they just seem like one bright point. So again, it's just a really interesting thing to look at all of what we know about astronomical events and these exciting observable things in the night sky, tracing them back and just enjoying them as we're going to be doing this week. Um, and if you wanna start practicing, it's the 18th today, we have a few days before the Great Conjunction, practice trying to find it in the night sky before the event because it's still bright. And again, as I mentioned, the planets are less than a degree apart in the night sky, so they are already beautiful and bright and amazing to witness. So start practicing tonight if you can. Whew, that's a lot more talking than I have done in the past few weeks. Um, so I'm going to move now to the most exciting portion of the afternoon. Uh, this is the point in space chat where I end my spiel and I move on to answering questions. So if you have not gotten a chance yet to drop your question in the comments below, go ahead right now, drop your questions below. I will get through as many as possible. And if you see me answering a question that you're not seeing below, that just means that someone asked it on Twitter, uh, somewhere else on Facebook, Instagram, on any of our other social medias. So I promise if you ask a question, I will find it. And at some point I will hopefully get to it. All right, deep breath. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Ashley's wondering, 
Ashley Merrill on Facebook is wondering what is she seeing just about the moon after sunset? It looks like one body. It could be the conjunction that you're referring to. If it's right above the moon, I don't think it's the conjunction, um, most likely. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it could very well be a star that you're witnessing. However, while we're getting ready for the conjunction, there are still other planets in the night sky that are visible that you can try to spot. Um, in the evening, we have Jupiter and Saturn making their conjunction, but Mars is also very bright and visible right now. Um, and then in the early morning, Venus is especially, especially bright and visible right now. So uh, depending on where you are and the time of day and exactly where it is at that time, I can't say for certain for your case specifically, um, but it is possible that it could be one of the other planets that are especially visible during this month. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that would be something really fun to investigate um, at home. <laughs> Larry, your passion for stars and planets equals mine. I'm very glad that you're also especially <laughs> passionate about stars and planets, Larry. I love space. I love people that love space. Oh, Gregory, that's very unfortunate. Gregory says, unfortunately, we've had rain for the last few nights here in Australia, but I'm hoping for a break in the weather. I'm also hoping for a break in the weather for you, Gregory. Um, a lot of people have been wondering if I'm having bad weather or for some reason I'm having trouble viewing these planets in the night sky. Is there anything I can do? You can, you know, if there are places you can drive where the sky is clear or dark or the weather is better, that is always an option. Um, of course, here on space.com, we're going to be posting photographs, videos, articles, everything about the upcoming astronomical event. Um, so we'll have lots of great imagery and everything after the fact, but unfortunately, um, I can't help you out with the weather. I wish I could. Unfortunately, I cannot. All right. Mahmood wonders, it, will it be visible from everywhere? It should be. Um, depending on where you are, it might be like a little bit different to find it in the night sky, but um, this is something that everyone should be able to find if, if the sky is clear, if there aren't giant skyscrapers or anything else in the way, um, if the clouds aren't covering it, you should hopefully be able to find it. My fingers are crossed for you. All right. Oh man, lots of bad weather forecasts in the comments. I'm sorry, guys. I'm lucking out with good weather where I am, so <laughs> I feel absolutely spoiled by it. I'm very sorry if you're having cloudy weather. Um, <laughs> why is it called a Christmas star? Um, uh, I don't know much about the origins of it religiously. Um, I know that the Star of Bethlehem is nicknamed the Christmas star, um, having to do with the story of Christmas. Um, but uh, people are using that terminology with this event coming up just because the conjunction happens to be just a few days before the Christmas holiday. So that's kind of why all of this is coinciding and why the two are being compared and why we're diving back into the possible astronomical history of this event described in the Bible. Um, so that's kind of why people are getting excited about it and, and diving into that history, which is just lots of fun. Okay, Brian asks, why is this conjunction so rare? Um, you stated it happens every 20 years. Um, so yes, so this event is, it does happen every 20 years. Um, it's not especially rare because it does happen every 20 years. However, uh, <laughs> uh, just because of how the planet's orbits evolve and change over time, little by little by little, um, every, you know, it's not this, they're not the same exact distance apart in the night sky, every single conjunction. Um, and it just so happens that this conjunction is the closest they've been in a really, really long time, 400 years long. Um, so while they do get really close and make this great conjunction once every couple decades, um, this just happens to be the closest they've been in an especially long time. Um, Bardeen asks, what about Space Force? I don't know, Bardeen, what about Space Force? Uh, <laughs> I'm 100% sure what you mean by that. I'm sure all the people at Space Force as I'm sure they love space, are also very excited about this upcoming event. Um, I don't know anyone who loves space who is not, but that's just me. All right. Aha, someone asks, how do we know that the Star of Bethlehem in the Bible wasn't just this same conjunction? Very interesting point. We absolutely do not know. Uh, like I mentioned, scientists have four kind of four main theories 
for the possible astronomical explanation for this biblical event. Um, they think that it could be a bright like fireball meteor. I think it could be a bright comet, um, something akin to Halley's Comet, possibly a supernova outburst, or number four, a planetary conjunction. And I mentioned this upcoming week, it's Jupiter and Saturn that are making this conjunction, two planets, and it's gonna be really bright and obvious and amazing, but it's possible for three planets to have a conjunction. Three planets in the night sky getting really close together um, and being even brighter and even more visible. So it's possible, this fourth theory that some scientists have, that it wasn't two, it could have been even three bright planets joining together, at least visually from Earth, in the night sky to form this ultra bright star-like, star-looking object. Um, so that's actually a really great question. They don't know. Perhaps. Who's to say? All right. Fred asks, what's the best direction to look for the conjunction? Southeast. Um, east is the name of the game. Southeast, if we're being a little bit more specific. Um, it's not that close to the horizon. It's pretty high up in the sky. Um, so even if you have buildings in the way, it, you should still be able to see it. Um, that's a really great question. Ahmad says, it's going to be beautiful. I can't wait to see it. Yes. Uh, and I know that it's not happening until the 21st. However, every night leading up to then for a little while, it's still going to be beautiful in the night sky and the two planets are still going to be really close together. So even though the conjunction isn't until the 21st, practice observing it. Go outside tonight, check it out, make sure that you can find it so on the 21st you know what you're looking for. Um, and it's also a great way to get involved with the whole family. I know that a lot of families are not going to be physically together this year, but it is a really great thing to talk about and share, um, learning how to view a conjunction, learning how to look for planets in the night sky um, is a really great family event, especially for this time of year. All right, so unfortunately, I am running out of time, but I have one, I think I have time for a couple more questions. All right, Mike asks a really great question. Why does it get brighter when they converge? So it doesn't necessarily get brighter per se, um, but it's how we're viewing it from Earth, right? So sometimes planets are especially bright in the night sky, um, or they're just bright and visible as Mars and Venus are currently as well. Um, but because they're going to be right next to each other, imagine you have two bright objects, equally bright, and together, if they are squished right on top of each other, Neither of them have gotten any brighter, but by being right next to each other, it appears brighter and more visibly obvious in the night sky. So it's not necessarily getting brighter per se, but it'll be a lot easier to see than usual. Um, oh, <laughs> all right, Victor asks, will this conjunction cause any atmospheric issues for us? Nope, these planets are way far away from Earth's atmosphere, so we just get to enjoy the show. Um, all right, I have time for one more question. Shaz asks, what's the most amazing thing you've ever seen in the sky? I, I don't know, that's a really great question. Um, I personally have a big soft spot for the, mu for the moon um, and for especially bright, beautiful full moons where you can really see the detail of the moon's face. That's always my favorite thing to look for in the night sky, but it is really hard to pick a favorite. Um, but that is a really great question. Sound off in the comments if you have a favorite thing that you like to look for in the night sky or anything you've witnessed that's been especially amazing, anyone that's seen Halley's Comet, anyone that's seen a rocket launch. I know it's not an astronomical phenomenon, but it is an unbelievable thing to witness in the night sky. Um, sometimes you can even see them from far away. Um, but what a great question. Thank you all so much for joining me here for Space Chat today. Um, unfortunately, because the holiday next week, I will again be off. Um, but in a couple weeks, I will be back in action for Space Chat. If you want me to talk about anything specific, a topic you love, something you want to ask questions about, drop it in the comments below or pop it onto any of our social media sites. Happy holidays to everyone and have a great weekend.